I don't know why or what you might think the reason why it is that when we come to Palm Sunday, as well as Good Friday, as well as all of these services of Holy Week, we're invited to be more than observers, but in fact to be participants. The reason is this. What we see in the life of Jesus as we listen to the words of the crowd, as we hear our own voice say, crucify him, crucify him, as we witness the drama of his unjust suffering, as we hear him, even in the midst of profound suffering, stop and give words of comfort along the way of the cross, as we wrestle with the irony of a crowd who, just a few days prior, <laughs> blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, says, crucify him. Same people, same group. It's meant to stir us, not merely, however, to move our emotions, although it is meant certainly to do at least that, but it really is an invitation. Because who is enduring all of these things is the one who loves us like we've never been loved, ever, by anyone. Who endured all that we so viscerally participated in for our sakes. Because he cares for us so deeply that it is in fact, as it says in Isaiah, the will of the Lord to bruise him. Why? So that by virtue of his death and resurrection, we might be included in this way that Jesus has prepared for us. So that we might know the very companionship of his presence through our sufferings, through our difficulties, through our joys, to know that in the midst of all that we go through in this life, that if Jesus can endure all that he endured, what we go through that's not hard for him at all. It, it is the power of what we have witnessed that gives credibility to his promise. I will never leave you or forsake you and that nothing can take you out of my hand. You see, we get into places of difficulty where we go, oh, I don't know whether I can get through this or not. It seems extraordinarily hard and difficult. And for our experience, in fact, it is. For Jesus, it's nothing. And therefore, no matter how deep the pain, no matter how deep the grief, no matter how inexplicable the suffering and the things that we endure, that we cannot understand, <laughs> that we have no idea why in the world this is happening to us, why it feels so both unfair and unjust, there is one who stands in us and with us, who knows the full extent of what unjust suffering is, of what unfair justice is, because that's precisely what he endured. And it's one of the points that Luke makes out in his gospel, that all of this was a kind of <coughs> travesty of justice. The crucifixion story and all that we will endure in Holy Week gives us the freedom to know that no matter what it is that we have endured, no matter what it is that we are going through now, that he understands, that he knows, and that no matter how bad <laughs> it is, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And notice when Paul says that, he says nothing can separate us from the love of God, of God. That's important. Because what he's saying here is, is that no matter what happens to me, no matter what I endure, I never move into the position of being disqualified from God's love and from God's presence. I will never leave you or forsake you is in fact an unconditional promise. So I, I don't know what it is that you may be facing this holy 
But we are invited, as we began this service, to enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts. Precisely because they are meant to bring to us Jesus, you know. You know. Because isn't it true, when you're in a position of particularly deep pain, there are people who will come and say to you, I know what you're going through. And you know they don't have a clue. <laughs> I mean, they're trying to be nice. And, and you appreciate the sympathy. But you also know they have no idea. But when Jesus comes, he can say with a place of authority, reserved for no human being, no other human being, that I know precisely what you're going through. Because he identifies wholly <laughs> and completely with what's happening inside of your heart that perhaps no one else can see. That's why we do this. It is to affirm for people who are in Christ Jesus the fact that all that he suffered, he did so on our behalf. And therefore, in his suffering, he is in fact with us in every way. And to say to those who do not yet know Christ, why in the world would you ever shake your fist at heaven when there is one who has endured the very worst suffering that humanity could ever give? Come and meet this God who loves you so dearly who identifies with all that you endure and invites you to come and to know his rest, his forgiveness, and his mercies. That's why we do this. There is much that can be said about these lessons. This is not the time. It's for a Bible study class. But I would say this to you today. Allow your heart to be tenderized to all that Jesus has endured. And if there is any place of resentment or anger where you've closed off your heart to what it is that, toward God because of what it is that you have endured, all of us you see, or at least many of us, if we are not paying attention, have these secret places of resentment where we blame God for the things that we have endured. And our hearts have been closed off in certain places to His love. And that inside of us, in <laughs> fact, is the crucify Him fist because of what we have endured. And we blame Him for it. And this is, in fact, meant to be an antidote to that where the one who bears the nail scar, scar is willing and desirous that somehow we would allow Him to come and take that place where our hearts are closed off and that he with that nail scarred hand might gently, if we would let him gently <clears throat> open that so that the place of anger and the place of fear, the place of resentment can receive the tender healing <coughs> mercies of the Christ who suffered on our behalf. So that instead of that resentment, we might know joy. We might know His peace. And know the truth by experience of the promise that says, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's life changing. That is life changing. It frees us in ways that we could never imagine. So I would invite you, as you walk through this week, ask God to show you your heart. Are there places where you have in sense said, No. I've been hurt too deeply. And allow, in seeing his suffering, allow those places in your heart to be opened to his healing love and to his mercy. Because he has endured all 
for you. Amen.